What's up, YouTube family? Real quickly, remember I was talking about a car where the wheel is towed in? Here's a perfect example of that. Check this out. See how close that tire is right there? Sorry about the background noise, but we are in a working body shop. And if you look on the side here, see it's tucked in. If we go underneath here, you'll see something that I was telling you about a couple days ago. There it is. There is the bent trailing arm that I was telling you about before. And if you come up towards the top, the upper, upper bar, this piece is bent also. This is also bent. So, kind of goes to show you that I know what I'm talking about. I'm doing these videos to help people like you figure out what's wrong with their car, how they can fix it cheaply, uh, then going to cheaper than going to the dealership and having them charge you three, four, five, six hundred dollars. So, as I said on Saturday when I did my other video, the trailing arm is bent. You can see where it's bent right here. So the wheel is turned inward. And the upper control arm is also bent. That's why the tire sits in on the top. So this thing didn't get hit that hard, but just take a look at it. Now from the side, you see the wheel is in. Come back here, you see the wheel is almost touching the quarter panel. It is touching the quarter panel. And look at the huge gap in the back here compared to the other side. So yeah, four figures there, three fingers there. So just remember, everything I'm doing is to help you save money, fix your car yourself. Um, I don't care if you're a girl or a boy, I don't care if you're 18 or 80. I like helping people uh, in some way or form. So if I don't help you in a way that helps you, um, find somebody that will. There's a lot of people out there. YouTube's a great platform. Okay, uh, current update. Um, had some problems with the suspension and brakes. Uh, took the car to a local shop, not the dealer this time, and they said you need new calipers, new rotors, new pads. It's going to be about $800 to do the front half. You know me, I just need a guidance or what's wrong and I'll figure it out and fix it myself. So here's what's wrong with the suspension. The upper strut mount rusted out, broke out, whatever you want to call it. So this broke out and the actual strut stud that was in the center was just bouncing up and down and it sounded horrible. So, and there were certain signs to let me know that this was gone. It started making a squeaky noise. Anytime I was driving it, it would be squeak, 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 and then it just finally broke and it went to brrrr. So, I went on gmcheapparts.com. This piece, the replacement piece, was $22. So I bought both sides. I've already put in the driver's side where the biggest damage was, but I figured for 22 bucks through gmcheapparts.com, I might as well go ahead and do the other side because it's eventually going to go too. The car has 163,000 miles on it as it sits now. Okay, as far as the brakes, what is wrong, one of the caliper pins has frozen. It's rusted in there and it won't slide back and forth as you're stepping on the brake. So as you're driving, you go over bumps, you hear. So what I'm going to do is take off the caliper uh, and the caliper bracket because the the pins are in the bra in the bracket. So I'm gonna take out the caliper bracket and I'm gonna heat it up with the torch. I'm gonna knock them out and put in the new pins with the new screws and the new grommets. So coming over to the car, that first piece is located up on here. This was so loose that I could rotate it by hand and then I could take this and, and have it clink up the side, but that side is done. Um, this side, um, is nice and tight um, one because there's pressure the car is off the ground um, but what I'm going to do is uh, take off the top here that is a 24 millimeter socket I'm going to take that off and then you'll see that rubber boot underneath this and I'm going to check the, check the wear and tear see if it's tore up or anything Okay. Uh, 
that's also a 24 mil. Take that apart, and then you'll see that rubber grommet. Okay, instead of doing all of that, I'm just gonna change it. Um, that upper plate here, that holds the, the strut in place. So now that this is out, you can see. Uh, let me see if I get it to move. You can you can see that the strut is just loose now. So I have to take off the uh, uh, sway bar link and the two bolts that hold it to the wheel hub, and take it out, take it over to the press, and fix that. So. Let me just go ahead and do that for you now. Today, we are gonna do a how-to video. And that how-to video is gonna be about how to replace the brake calipers on a 2014 Chevrolet Malibu. And this particular technique style uh, procedure is pretty common on most vehicles uh, with slight variations. So what I'm gonna do is take you downstairs and show you what we're about to do. Okay, the Malibu has 194,000 miles, actually 193, 640 something thousand miles. What's in this truck, trunk, is something I'm going to replace. Oh, it is the brake calipers. In each one of those boxes, there's a left and right front brake caliper. And you see I have extra brake fluid to fill it up and bleed the brakes. And I have a vice grip to pinch off the hole so all the brake fluid doesn't leak out while I'm changing it. Side note, for 194,000 miles, isn't that very clean? No rust, a couple dings and dents, a couple paint chips, but for 194,000 miles and a car that's six years old. Shows you what happens if you just take care of your stuff. Now for the reveal. <laughs> This is the 2014 Chevrolet Malibu 2.0 turbocharged engine LTZ brake caliper. And the reason why I'm changing the brake calipers, I just changed the brakes about two weeks ago, but I noticed that the floating pins that I replaced in another one of my videos, go to my channel and you'll find it. Um, I replaced the pins and less than a year later, those pins are being was frozen. The uh, uh, they were frozen out. I couldn't get them to go back in. So I took a hammer and a chisel and I knocked it in, and uh, it kind of moved back and forth. Um, so I pulled the pin out and put some more grease on it. Then I put it back in. It still was a little grimy. So I took it back out again. Took a Dremel tool and just kind of cleaned up the insides, get any rust or any uh, corrosion out of it, and lubed it up again. Put it in, and uh, it was working. I said, okay, good. I, I showed this in, in other videos of mine, but um, I thought to myself, I'm just going to get a new bracket. So I called up your know, local car parts store. I won't say any names, um, any name, but you know who they are. There's a, you have some in your, in your location. And I said, all I need is this bracket. I don't need the caliber. I need this bracket. So this is the bracket. And that is, and this is the caliber. So all I need is the bracket. They say it's not sold separately. It's sold as a unit. So you have to buy new calipers um, and, uh, 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 and if, to, get, to get the bracket. Um, okay, no problem. <sighs> but here's the thing. It is a big task. This is not for beginners. I'm going to show you how I do it and show you a couple of things you should do and things you shouldn't do. And this can be done by a do-it-yourselfer, a beginner, a girl, a man, um, a woman, a boy, whatever, whoever you are. Just a lot of precaution has to be taken in this. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my car. Okay, guys, today we're going to go through how to change the brake calipers on the Malibu. Okay, the very first thing we have to do is get the wrench to take the lug nuts off the tires. The second thing we need is the jack. And lastly, we need a jack stand. We have loosened up the lug nuts. Now we're gonna jack up the car and take off the tires. 
Now that the car is jacked up, let's take off the tire. Okay, we now have the tire off. The time that I started doing this is 9.30 a.m. Saturday morning. It's already 87 degrees. The highs today is supposed to be in the 90s. Um, I'm trying to get this done early before it hits high noon and I'm sitting here sweating bullets. So what I do have is a fan from the house that I'm gonna plug up. So anything I say from this point on, it's gonna have a background noise and I apologize for that, but I'm sweating bullets already. So let's go into phase, whatever, three, four, five, I don't know. Jack the car up, take the tire off. So phase three, taking off the caliper. There's one thing I forgot to add, it's the tools. Right there is a blue point tool kit. Um, it's got over 585 pieces in it. Uh, I paid roughly $485 for this uh, 10 years ago, maybe five, I, I'm not sure. Uh, do you have to have a kit that expensive? No, but I'm a snap-on guy. I buy mostly snap-on tools. I know there'll be people say, hey, you can get this stuff for way, way a lot cheaper, like getting Craftman or any other name brand, but and still get the same type of lifetime warranty. But I have a snap-on guy that comes to me anytime my tools break, instead of me taking time out of my day, driving to the local hardware store, standing in line, waiting to get it swapped out and all that other stuff. I just get on my phone and say, hey, snap-on, meet me at the house, meet me at the job. I need this tool, and he brings it to me. So I will pay for that type of comfort. All right, let's get continue with the caliper swap. Okay, I've taken the jack stand and secured it up underneath the car. I'm going to release the jack um, from the car so that it's completely supported by the jack stand. Here's a tip for you do-it-yourselfers. Never leave your hydraulic lift on the car while you're working on it. Um, it's, only, it's a hydraulic system, and the more weight there is on it, the more wear and tear it is on this device. This particular hydraulic jack cost me $99. The jack stands came with it as, as the kit. So I got two jack stands in the jack for $99. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is actually take off the brake caliper that's on there now to remove the pads. Um, as you saw with yesterday's video, the caliper and bracket come together. But in order to get the pads in, you have to separate the caliper from the bracket. And I'll show you how to do that. But first, I'm going to turn the steering wheel to the far left so it's easier access for me to get to. Okay, the first thing you see here is the caliper itself. Um, if you are only doing brakes, there are two bolts that you need to take off to get the caliper off to get to the pads, to take the old pads off and put the new pads on. There's one here and there's one here. On this car, this is a... Uh, 13 or 14, I'll, I'll verify that once I start taking it off. Um, here in a, four, a 13, 14 on this one. But here's a tip for you do it yourselfers. Instead of taking both of these off and pulling the caliper off and getting the wire to hang it someplace and, and let the caliper dangle, if you just take loosen the top one, take the bottom one all the way out, you can take and pivot this up and get access to take the pads out and put the new pads in providing that your rotor is not scratched up or damaged. Okay, correction. I said this had 580 something pieces. It does not. It has 155 pieces, okay? It cost me $585. Um, so you get all these sockets, both standard and metric, and you get all these different wrenches along with a couple of extra bits here, uh, torch, uh, flatheads, Phillips, um, and Allens, uh, and the same up, up there. So you get a lot. Um, this cover snaps in and out. It also snaps out, and you can use it as a knee pad because it's got a foam piece here. This is all, this is all foam, and this back half is also foam. But you can snap this out, it just snaps in from uh, here and there. Snap it out and use it as a knee pad. I'm not using that because I'm using my tire as a stool. So we'll snap it in. All right, let's continue. 
Okay, I have the wrench and I have the socket. The socket is a 14 millimeter. So as I stated before, I'm gonna take the bottom one out and crack the top one, pivot the caliper up and take the pads out. Okay, the bottom bolt is out, the top one is loose. I'll give it a little pull. Ooh, whoa, what is all that? Hold on a second. Okay, I took the bolt out in the bottom, loosened one on top. I pivot the caliper up, as you can see it's facing up. Let's get a different view from it. Ah. So that's what we got. And now we can take out the pads. Uh, just kind of wiggle them out. As you see there, like I said, they're, they're brand new pads. Um, I'm looking at the rotor itself. Uh -oh. I'll fix that. It's got some scorch marks. Uh, scorch marks, um, I don't know if you can show up on the video. There's a scorch mark there, some scorch marks here. Um, it's just that the brakes are being heavily used by the owner. And I don't know who's been driving this car, LOL. Um, the reason why I paused the video at first, I noticed there's a lot of gunk up under here. And I was like, where is that coming from? That's from when the drive shaft front axle broke and this rubber boot broke off, broke, split. And the grease that's inside it to help keep the uh, the joints lubricated slanged everywhere. Um, I cleaned it up the very best I can. I mean, I took the tire off and I grabbed a scrub brush. And this is like six months ago, and I scrubbed it. Um, you can see renderings of it on the shock tower here, strut tower. Um, and that's just an area that I miss. So no big deal. So we got the pads out. Um, the only reason why we did it this way because we're taking this all off as a bracket. The bracket bolts are uh, this one here and that one there. And looking at the size of it, I'm going to guess it's probably uh, 18 or 19 millimeter. Um, but we'll see. I'm going to pause the video and, and start taking that apart. Okay, the socket is actually a 21 millimeter socket. Um, but be, I'm, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that off, and that's gonna remove the caliper bracket and the caliper all in one unit. But before I do that, I need to take off and secure the brake line. Actually, in order, I need to secure, then take off the brake line. Now, people may ask, why do you use metrics? Okay, um, that's just how things are today. Most cars are built in metric uh, 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 standards. Um, but just to let you know, this socket is a 7 16th. Okay, see how that's on there? This socket is an 11 millimeter. And you see that? It's got the same, roughly about the same amount of wiggle room. That's the 11. And this is, yeah, this is the 7. 16th and honestly the 7 16th to me moves a little bit more let's put the 11 back on there and roughly the same six in one hand half a dozen the other um, I'm going to use the 11 mil so what I'm going to do to secure the brake line and what do I mean by that when you take this brake line off the brake fluid that comes from the master cylinder under the hood has the brake fluid flowing back and forth um, through this line. I'm going to take a pair of vice grips and I'm going to crimp it here so when I take this off the brake fluid doesn't leak on the floor. I am also going to put something underneath a tray or something to catch the little bit that does come out from the caliper because you know it's this chamber is filled with brake fluid so it may leak out so not to stain the driveway any worse um, I'm going to put something underneath that. Okay I, all, of, all of my vice grips are at work, so I went out and bought these little cheap um, vice grips. It's small enough that it should be able to pinch the line with no problems. Um, this was on sale. It cost me $8. The reason why I'm giving you the prices of this stuff, so if you're a beginner and you do not have these tools, I'm giving you the basic cost. If you can find these cheaper, if you can find these tools cheaper and this cheaper, by all means. Okay, I'm back. Uh, that was a little 10 minute trip. So this is what you're gonna need. I hope you can see that. 
hose line clamp set. If you note here, there's three different size clamps in there. They had a, just a single, like the big one. It was $15.99. This set of three was $14.99. All right, so let's take this apart and continue with the install. Okay, let me show you how this works. Um, you squeeze the handle, that little tab drops down. You open it up, down. Clumsy today. You open this up, like so. Put it around the holes. Clamp it. And then you slide this up. The more you slide it towards the top, the more it squeezes on the bottom. So, here's the example. Have it on there, go to, and that's all the way to the very tippy top. Um, so, now that that's hopefully secure, let's take off the brake line. Sorry for all the different angles and all the shaking. Um, it's kind of hard to do this when you holding the camera, so I'm just going to go ahead and take it off. Oh, great. Up. Oh. It was running the whole time. Oh well. Um, the socket to take off the brake uh, caliber bracket is a 22. This socket is also a 22. So I can use this to break it loose. Alright, now I'm going to pause the video and, and just take it off all the way. Okay. Have the caliber and caliber bracket off. If you note, there's not maybe one drip of brake fluid, nothing on the ground. 
Um, it's time to grab the new caliper. Oh, while I was gone, I changed the settings on the camera because I had it set up for 60 frames per second, HD, and all that other stuff, but it was only allowing me to record up to 10 minutes at a time, and it was using up a lot of power. So I put it on just a full frame recording, and I can record up to like two hours or however long the battery lasts. All right, I took a closer look at the rotor. Um, if I'm putting on new pads, new caliper, I am going to go and get the rotor resurfaced. Um, to get the rotor off, there is a little Torx bit. Um, it's a T27 Torx bit. I have that based off of my kit that I have. Uh, and it comes with an adapter. I put it in there and I take it off. And now that the bracket is off and caliper is off and the bolt is out, this comes off real easy. I'm going to try to do this with one hand. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we got a little bit of a setback here. And the setback is, there's no place open today that turns rotors. And the places that do turn the rotors, their machine is broke. The nearest one is in Cudahy, Wisconsin, which is basically Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, so I'm gonna pause this video for a long length of time. I'm gonna take off the other side and the other rotor and take it up to cut a hay, sit there and wait for the guy to turn both rotors, then come back here and put them on. Worst case scenario, um, they can't turn the rotors and I have to buy new rotors. So here we go. Okay guys, this is the reason why you do one side at a time. Um, I'm rushing to get this rotor off to take it to O'Reilly so I can get the rotors resurfaced. Um, here, I don't know if this camera's going to show it, but if you look closely on this rotor, you see those spots? Those are hot spots. And if you look actually closer, they're cracks. This rotor cannot be resurfaced. This rotor has to be re replaced. Now, to speed things up, what I'm going to do is take the 22 mil and just take off the bracket as one piece. Leave the brake line on there and everything get a hook or a hanger and take the caliber and hang it from the strut. Um, but the problem is now that the, this tire is off the ground and the tire is off, I'm using my tool to try to take out that Torx. And as you can see, it's starting to strip. I need to have some kind of weight on there because right now it's just spinning. So if I go in there with my tool, switch hands. Oops. Go in there. It's in there, but when I go to try to break it loose, it the rotor turns and it's getting it's on its own verge of stripping out. So now I'm in a position that I have to get this out, and I can't get that out without this rotor rotating as I'm putting as I'm putting pressure on it. Of course, I'm trying to show you and I won't do it. As, uh, well, maybe. So I have to get that out. I have the tools at work to drill that out, whatever, whatnot, but I have nothing here to do that with. Um, so getting ready to spend more money and more time. So it is now 12.30. Remember we started this at nine o'clock. I stopped in between to help my wife out with something around the house, took the grandkids home, came back, been to the auto parts store, came back, and I'm leaving out again. The only auto parts store that can turn rotors today or have the rotors in stock at the price that I can afford is 30 miles away so preemptively if if I would have planned this better I would have done this better but I discovered this problem yesterday at 5 o'clock coming home from work and I'm like okay what's going on here so I took a look at it and said well I'll just get the calipers and do it at home but there's some major tools that I don't have at my house that I need from my job so I'm gonna have to figure something out and I'll show you how I'll solve those problems because if you run across these same problems you're probably gonna have to do the same thing so I'm gonna show you once I figure it out how to get this uh, apart 
Okay, bad news. I want to try to take the rotor off and my tool snapped. All right, plan B. Okay, we are back at it again. Um, yeah, this has been an all day project. It is now 5.15. After getting the parts and coming back here, uh, did some housework. Uh, the, we're getting ready for a little bit of a party tomorrow, so cleaned up the house, mopped the floors, yada, yada, yada. Uh, now that that's done, I'm gonna resume getting back to repairing the car. If you listen closely in the background, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up for a second. Can you hear the speedboats? We're that close to the lake. We're literally like three blocks from the lake. I can hear whatever speedboat's on the lake right now. Um, I don't know if you can, I don't, I don't know if the microphone is that sensitive that it'll pick that up on a Galaxy S9 Plus. So I still need to figure out how to get that other rotor off um, because my tool broke. So what I went and uh, what I what I did is I sprayed it down with some WD-40, as you can see. Uh, I sprayed all the necessary bolts that need to be taken off to make sure they don't break because I'm not at work, so I don't have all my tools. And I have the new calipers. Um, I drove all the way up to Cudahy, Wisconsin, which is not a lot. Really, I drive, I work there, so it's not like it was a long drive for me because I, I do it on a daily basis. Um, and the guy that was going to turn my rotors went home sick. So I said, forget it, and I bought new rotors. Here's the thing. Each rotor was $75 each. But the guy at the front counter told me this. He says, if you buy the pads, there is a package deal that can save you a lot of money. I said, well, how much are we talking about on the rotors? Um, he said, I can give you a discount. It'll be $135. But if I put it under this package plan where you get two rotors and new brake pads, it would be $89. What would you do? I said, give me the pads. Worst case scenario, I have an extra set of pads for the car for the next time I need to do brakes. Even though the brakes have a lifetime warranty, now I have two sets of, of pads. He even said this little side note, I don't want to get the guy in trouble, but he said, if you really don't want the pads, get them. Put your rotors on and everything and then bring the pads back and get a refund that kind of breaks that contract agreement because you're getting two rotors and pads for 89 dollars and now you're going to return their 20 dollar pads to get a 20 dollar profit in your pocket it's not good karma all right so let's move on to getting the new caliber out of the trunk here are the new calibers one says left the other says right uh, we're doing the left side, so let's finish the left side. All right, here are the calipers side by side. I'm just making sure that everything matches up. Um, they got Mondo on both sides. They have a stamp of TG139, and over here it's Mondo TG139, the factory GM stamp, uh, the <laughs> aftermarket GM stamp. Um, trying their best to make it look OE, but it's not. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pre-fill the caliper with brake fluid, reuse this new nut that has a hole in it. Let me see, is it going to come out easy? Cool. This is a bleeder nut. It pretty much allows the brake fluid to seep inside the brake caliper, and I'll show you that in just a second. Oh, I didn't realize this thing was that damn long. All right, you see that little hole? That little hole there? That lines up with the brake caliber inlet holes and brake fluid seeps into this little holes and goes into the caliper. So, and there is a carper gasket that goes on, the, on, on this side. Um, it's a crushable carper gasket that has to be replaced every time you replace the caliper. Also in the bag, you get an extra bolt and two extra carper gases. I still have the one I, that came in a caliper, but they give you extra parts for future services, I guess. Because um, anytime you take that off, take this bolt off, you gotta replace that carper gasket. And if you got an extra bolt, why not replace both? Okay, I'm going to pre-fill 
the caliper chamber with the dot three brake fluid. Um, the DOT stands for, I forgot what DOT. Anyway, um, there's a dot three and a dot four. Oh God, I forget what the DOT. I know the Department of, oh, Department of Transportation, I think. Anyway, um, dot three is a high temperature synthetic brake fluid. Dot four is even a higher temperature. Why would you use dot four? If you have a race car, you drag race, you do a lot of high speed driving, you want a brake fluid that has a higher boiling point, which will allow it to still give you the performance and grip. When brake pads heat up from rather, like you see in the movies, a high speed chase and a lot of, you know, turning, drifting around corners and cutting through alleyways. Once that brake fluid heats up, it's going to be uh, harder to stop the car because the brake fluid is heating up, uh, thinning out. You step on the brakes and then you almost have to put it to the floor. You don't get that nice firm feeling. You start getting like a squishy pedal. But for the average driver, dot three is more than enough. If you want to use dot four, and because you want to be the fast and the furious and all that other kind of stuff, then um, dot four is much what you might use. There may even be a higher number, like a dot five, six, or seven, but I guarantee you that's going to be for something like a, a NASCAR, Indianapolis, and Formula One, uh, and maybe even drag race cars. But for your average civilian, dot three is more than enough. Oh, and the reason why I'm doing it on the table, because I don't want to take a chance of spilling any of the brake fluid onto the concrete and on anything else. Um, I don't have a funnel small enough to uh, uh, fit in that hole. Um, so I'm going to try to pour it by hand, very slowly, very cautiously. Hopefully it works. If it doesn't, then I, at least I tried. So, all right, let's, let me get started. Okay, little tech note. Um, you want to loosen this bleeder valve before adding it in. I spilled a little on the table. Okay, if you can see it, can you see it? Um, that's okay, but I'm going to open up the bleeder valve and fill it up. Some of this is going to spill out. I'm going to try to fill this up as much as I can, hold it, hold it level as I put the bolt in. And then put it up on caliber. This is going to lessen the time that I'm going to use bleeding the brakes because I'm pre-loading the caliber. Okay, this is a 10 mil. I cracked it loose. I also took off the bleeder valve on the original because I want to use this rubber grommet and transfer it over to um, the new bleeder valve. Why do you call this a bleeder valve? Yeah, you see that little hole? Camera's not focusing. That little hole. Uh, when you have an air bubble and you need to get the air bubble out of your system, you pump your brakes really hard, then you crack this open, whatever air is in there will escape out of that bleeder valve and squirt out the top of the holes here. Mm -hmm. So the air comes out of there and comes out there. I'm sorry, it goes into there and comes out of there. Also, it... Um, once it's full, instead of air, it'll be brake fluid coming out the top. Now that this is out, you can take a look inside. I'm gonna have to change the settings. Um, you can see that little bit I add soaked in, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Okay, I got some more. If you look inside, you can see it's full to the, to the brim. Um, some of that is gonna spill out, but what I'm gonna do is put the bleeder valve in, put my finger on, over the other hole, walk over to the car, and connect this with the new plug and then uh, the new bolt and the new crushable gasket okay the new bleeder valve with the old uh, grommet is installed you can see the fluid level overflowing I'm going to put my finger over the top of this carry this level over to the car and put in the new parts um, I still will bleed the brace but this helps make it a little bit easier to bleed And for those of you, yes, I did spill some. You can see it on the table here. Um, but I'll clean it up with a paper towel. Looking closely at the inlet valve, 
there's a gasket on the bottom and a gasket on the top. So that's why there are two gaskets in the box. You have to use both gaskets. One on the bottom here, one on the bottom, and one on the top. Um, I'll try to get these off to put the new ones in. If I can't get it off, I'm just going to reuse it, which is probably not the most wise thing to do. No, I'll get it off. Never mind. Okay, new calipers installed. I have the new rotor. I'm going to put that on, and then I'll put the bracket back on, and put the tire back on, bleed the brakes on this car, and then do the other side, which I'm going to have a little problem with because the bolt started to strip out, but I'll figure it out. Okay, so I got the bracket back on and tightened. As you see, I'm putting the pads back in. That blue gel that you're seeing, uh, it's basically a grease. Um, what we have, it's called caliber grease. You need to put that on the pads and the pins. But since this is a brand new the, uh, caliber and bracket, all of this grease is already inside that. I just put some a little bit on the pads. Um, I'm gonna wipe the excess off. And I have what's called a brake cleaner. Uh, when these rotors are shipped, they have a little oil on them to make sure they don't rust because it's bare metal. And here's a key thing. You only get rust on anything when you have three elements. Bare metal, moisture, and oxygen. You eliminate any one of those three and your car will never rust. This is why it's important to kind of keep your car wash. Um, if you get rid of, a little bit rid of, if you get rid of one of those three eels, the bare metal, oxygen, or, um, what was the other one? Damn, I forgot it already. Bare metal, oxygen, and moisture. Um, you get rid of one of those three, you don't have to worry about rust uh, that much. Rust will still find a way if it wants to find a way. So washing your car and putting it on a coat of wax, that coat of wax seals some of the bare metal away from the elements and will protect it from rusting or slow the rusting process down. Um, this is pretty much it for the side because it's just a matter of uh, putting the pads in, cleaning up the brake uh, cylinder again once everything's together, um, and bleeding the brakes. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to bleed the brakes. I'm going to take all these little bits and pieces of video, stitch it all together, and make like a a bigger video that shows everything and hopefully I can keep it under a half an hour so thanks for watching there's still a lot to do on the other side but at this point um, I just want to get finished uh, so subscribe to my channel if you have any questions about what this job is or other jobs or how to do other things please subscribe send me a comment in the comment session uh, give me a thumbs up and help my channel grow um, so I can do this in a more uh, timely manner. Um, I'm just pretty much doing this as a hobby right now. Uh, as, as I've told you today, the grandkids was over, uh, uh, helping the wife with some of the house chores, doing some errands, and now it's uh, it's 7:40 <laughs> on a Saturday, um, and I'm and I still have the other side yet to do. So, in order for me to be more concentrated on this and give you guys more content. I need a thousand subscribers so this is a cheap ploy but please subscribe to my channel so that I can get a thousand viewers so I can start monetizing this so I can say to myself it's worth it because I have a thousand viewers and let's give them what they want a better content uh, uh, and, and show you how to keep your car looking nice at a hundred and ninety thousand miles all right this is James I am signing off see you in the next video